Today's video is for those who are in love with mala and those who are going to love it. For those of you who don't know, mala is a stir fry that is spicy and numbing and fragrant. It's literally in the name, mala xiang. And in it, you can have any ingredients that you want. I have not come across a single ingredient that would not do well in mala. So what I'll be doing is in the home kitchen, I'm going to prepare three kinds of mala, each with a differing level of difficulty. And even I am not sure what's the taste difference going to be like. So I think it'll be interesting. So without further ado, let's get to it. So the first step, no matter what mala we are cooking, would be to prep the ingredients that we want in our dish. On this channel, we always, always prep our ingredients with an easy clap. The important part here is to cut up the ingredients into a smaller, easier to cook portion since the cooking time in stir fry is very short. If any ingredients need more heat, you can choose to blanch them first and with that out of the way, let's begin with level 1. Level 1, we're gonna pick up one of these ready-made pastes from the supermarkets. There are many other brands out there. Today, I chose the famous Hai Di Lao. When you open it up, you should find a packet of paste and sometimes dry ingredients like this bag of chilies. So first, we heat up some oil in a wok and fry up the chilies to get some fragrance. Then put your sauce in as well to sort of wake it up a bit, give that a stir. And then in with all of your ingredients, starting with the hardest ones to cook first. For me, they were the, these thicker cuts of chicken thighs and the prawns. Let it spend a few minutes in there before adding your other ingredients like your mushrooms or your tofu skin or whatever other ingredients you have. Incorporate everything in really well. Lastly, add your blanched ingredients in and give it a toss with the sauce as well. Normally, here is where you taste for seasoning, but since it's a pre-made sauce, it should already be very well seasoned. So take your plate and scoop up your mala xiang guo. For your toppings, more ready-made stuff. So here I have a pack of uh, cashew nuts, sprinkle them on, and also a good dose of toasted sesame seeds. And then we are done! What I can say about this version is that it tastes remarkably similar to 90% of the mala xiang guos out there. And very honestly, it's pretty good. There's a reason why Hai Ti Lao is doing so well after all. Super simple, do this for any family dinner or when you have friends over and you have them tagging you as chef in their insta story. But if that's not enough for you, let's move on to level 2. At level 2, we're gonna make our own mala paste with the help of some other sauces. So first, we're gonna chop up some ginger, some onion, and also have some minced garlic ready. In addition, we're gonna have some dried chilies, hua jiao fen or numbing pepper powder, and some five spice powder ready as well. Then, heat up some hot oil in a wok, to, and then to it, we're gonna add our chilies, our minced ginger, our chopped up onions, as well as some minced garlic for them to release their fragrance. Then when you can smell the aroma coming up, we're gonna add about 1 tablespoon of chili flakes or however much you want, 1 teaspoon of numbing pepper powder and 1 teaspoon of 5 spice powder. Give that a stir. The sauce should be rather oily, so top up some oil if you find it too dry. And then to it, we're gonna add 1 tablespoon of dobanjiang as well as 1 tablespoon of Lao Gan Ma. Mix the sauces in very well. To finish off our sauce, I'm going to drizzle some Liao Jiu around the side of the wok. Sorry, I'm not sure what the translation of Liao Jiu is, but it's one variant of Chinese cooking wine. And then our sauce is ready. From this point on, it's the same as before. Hardest to cook ingredients in first, all the way to the blanched ingredients stir everything in really well. Again, taste for seasoning, but since there's a good amount of tou pan jiang and lao gan ma in there, it should be quite okay as well. So take your bowl and get your mala xiang guo. For toppings, we're gonna go with some shantong peanuts and some cilantro. I know, I know, you can skip it if you want. 
and then just a sprinkle of sesame seeds and then we are done. This would taste rather different from the first one and would feel more fresh because of the aromatics. Be careful of how much Toban Jiang and Lao Gama you add because that might make the dish rather tart. Still not satisfied? Let's move on to the last level. This section deals with a lot of hot oil and moisture. Do be very careful not to get scalded. Seek supervision from someone experienced if you're new to the kitchen. At level 3, we'll be dealing with a lot of ingredients. So to simplify it, I've classified them into 4 bowls. We begin first with bowl 1, which is our spices bowl, in which we have 4 short sticks of cinnamon, 6 star anise, 8 cardamom seeds, and 8 cloves. We're gonna add hot water to them and let that soak for 15 minutes. Moving on to bowl 2, our numbing peppercorns will be soaked in some liao chiu. I'm using green numbing peppercorns here, of which I only found in Xingxiong. I think it has a more lemony accent as compared to the red ones, which I really enjoy. Let that soak for 15 minutes as well. Third bowl is our chilies. We're going to soak some dried red chilies in hot water for 15 minutes. After which, we're going to add other chilies, but for now, just let it sit there. And lastly, fourth bowl, aromatics, in which we have minced garlic, minced ginger, and some chopped onion. You can blend them up if you want. I put them in the same bowl as they are used in the same step, and it's just easier to remember. Fifteen minutes later, back to our chilies bowl. So drain the hot water and add three red chilies and six chili patties in. I was going for zhong la or medium spicy here. So put more chili patties if you want it to be spicier. Also drain the hot water from bowl one and the liao jiu from bowl two. So we're gonna blend up the spices and the chilies. Ideally, you like to blend the spices to a finer grain, almost like a powder but my blender wasn't that good, so this was what I had. And then for chilies, same thing. You might need to add a minimal amount of water to get the blender going. And then you should have a paste like this. Careful with your hands and eyes here. <coughs> Moving on, we're gonna render down a lot of lard. I think I have about 700 grams of lard here. Start with a cold wok and slowly let, let it render down, stirring every now and then. Be careful, there might be some moisture in the pork lard which, which will cause it to speed, so don't get scalded here. While that is going on, you're going to prepare your mise en place. So we're going to have some coriander and some spring onions, your four bowls, several bay leaves, liao jiu and tou pan jiang ready. When your lard is golden brown like so, scoop them out, allowing them a few seconds for them to drain before pouring them onto a plate. Really clean the wok pop properly here, if not it will burn and leave a bitter aftertaste in your paste. And then put your green in like so, be careful because all that's left in the wok is hot oil. The moisture in whatever you put in will react like so. So don't get your oil too hot, about 50-70% will do. The bubbles are the moisture trying to escape, so as you cook longer, the bubbling will go down. Once it's looking wilted and brown like so, take them out and toss them. And then in with 3 tablespoons of bowl 4, which are your arom aromatics. Again, a lot of bubbling and that's what you want. You want to lower down the moisture content of the ingredients you're putting in now. So we also want to do the same for bowl 3. Here I added 5 tablespoons. Slowly stir and let the bubbling go down.
When the bubbling is much lesser like this, we can add bowl 1 which are our spices. Let it cook for a bit before adding 1 teaspoon of topanjiang. Now 5 minutes before you turn off the flame, add your bowl tool which are your numbing peppercorns and your bay leaves. You cannot cook the numbing peppercorns for long, if not it will lose its fragrance. Now close the lid and let it cool. And when it's cooled down completely, transfer it out and store it for a minimum of 12 hours before using. This will let the flavors infuse properly, so it's time to wash up and go dream about Mala Sianko. New day, fresh wok. Heat up some oil in the wok first. And then first step is to in with your aromatics, however much you want from bowl tree, and some dried chilies. Again, going for zhong la, medium spicy, add more if you wish. And then the same thing in with all of your ingredients starting with the hardest ones to cook first. You might notice that I'm frying up the ingredients before the sauce this time. This is a better way to bring out the flavors of your ingredients so that your mala senko does not just taste of the sauce. The previous two levels did not do this. And then when everything is almost cooked, ladle on your homemade mala paste. I used about one and a half to two ladles here. You just want a nice coating of sauce on all of your ingredients. We're also gonna go in with some topanjiang, some hua jiao fen, and chili oil. Finishing touches, add some spring onions and turn off the flame. Since we haven't seasoned anything yet, taste for seasoning and add however much salt you want. For this amount of ingredients, I used about one and a half teaspoon of salt. And then get your bowl and enjoy your mala siang kuo. For toppings, we're gonna go with a generous amount of pork lard from earlier and also a sprinkling of sesame seeds. And then we are done! The best way to describe this taste is that it's home cooked. All of the ingredients and the spices feel very fresh and clean, and all underlined with the umami of pork lard. Most mala senkos are simply shook because of its saltiness and spiciness, but this version brings out each spice and each ingredient better, in my opinion. So there you have it, 3 levels of mala. I cannot say for sure that each level will be tastier than the last but I can definitely say that once you have prepared mala, you will have a really really different sense of appreciation when you have mala outside. If you were to ask me with each level, I would think that the dish will taste more and more home cooked and fresh in a way as compared to food from outside. I hope you guys liked the video. This video was really really quite tiring to make and very very interesting for me because I had to cook 3 malas and watch each mala evolve with each step of preparation. So yeah, that's all I have for you guys this time. Do leave a like if you like the video, dislike it if you dislike it, and subscribe if you haven't already. And do comment if you're gonna make a mala and what level you're gonna make. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one.